Alright, so with geometric um, sequences, when we're trying to find the first three terms, when they've given you any other two terms in the sequence, it's a bit more complicated than the arithmetic sequence, I will warn you of that. Um, and it might seem kind of intimidating, but if you watch this a few times, take your time and give a practice at a few problems, you'll be able to get your process for it, and it will work out for you. So, here I've been given term 4 and term 7. So again, you can kind of visualize that idea. One, two, three, four. I know that term four is negative seventy-two, and I've got five, six, and term seven is five hundred and seventy-six. So I need to figure out what am I timesing or dividing by to get between negative seventy-two and five hundred and seventy-six. Um, and that's a bit more tricky for some people to find intuitively, so we've got to go about a process of kind of a robust way to do it that will work every time. So what I want you to do is use the two given terms and write out their equations as a fraction. And what I mean by their equations is the tn is equal to a times r to the power of n minus 1. So let's start with um, always the bigger n, so always when n is bigger. In this case, that's going to be 7 first and then 4. So we're going to say t sub 7 is going to be equal to 57, 576 is equal to um, a, which we don't know, times r to the power of n in this case is 7, so 7 minus 1 bracket. And then I'm going to write as a fraction underneath the other one. So using t sub 4, the value there is negative 72, that's equal to a that I don't know, times r, and this is the fourth term, so 4 minus 1, because n is equal to 4. So again, n is equal to 4 on that one, and n is equal to 7 on that one because of the little number there. So that's what I mean by write out their equations as a fraction. Put the, the one that's later in the sequence with the bigger n number first on top, and the other one on the bottom, leaving the parts that you don't know, such as a and r. Now we're going to divide the numbers in front and leave the equal sign. So if you put into your calculator 7, 576 divided by 72, you're going to get negative 8 is equal to, we're going to cancel our a's, you can ignore them, we're going to leave the r, because we're going to have an r, and we need to look at the numbers up here, the powers. So what we're going to do here is subtract the powers and put on the r. So what you might want to think about simplifying first is what's 7 minus 1? That is 6, so we could think of that as r over 6, or r to the power of 6, and 4 minus 1 is r to the power of 3. Those are the powers that I want you to subtract. So what's 6 minus 3? You get 3, so r to the third. Now this is what you can put into solver and solve for r. So in this case we should get r is equal to negative 2. Now part of what's happening here is that I'm just using some algebra. It's cancelling away the a's for me. And if I simplify again, 7 minus 1 I'll get 6 on top and 4 minus 1 I'll get 3 for the power on the bottom. And when you simplify powers you end up subtracting them. If I take 3 r's off the bottom and 3 r's off the top I end up with just three r's left on the top total. But now I know r, so that's r. And once we have r, we're going to plug it into the equation using one of the given terms that we have. So I'm going to pick a pair, such as, for example, um, in this case, let's use t4 m equals negative 72. And again, t sub 4 means to me that I know that n is equal to 4 in this case. So my general formula is tn is equal to a r to the power of negative 1, or sorry, to the power of n minus 1, put in my invisible time sign there. So tn in this case is going to be the value, which is negative 72, is equal to a, which I don't know, times r, which is in this case negative 2, and I'm going to put brackets around it because it's a negative number, and then um, to the power of n, which in this case is 4, minus 1. So again, on your calculator, you might have something like this. 
bracket negative 2, um, then your power button, and n minus 1, sorry, not n, but 4 in this case, 4 minus 1. Now some of you guys are switched on, you'll notice that you can simplify a lot of this stuff in your head, but um, if you're not able to simplify stuff carefully without making little mistakes, don't. Just leave it for your calculator to do. So when you put this in, you should get a is equal to 9. So now we're sorted. This is going to be our first term. Because remember, a is always going to be the first term. So we can put 9 up here. And we found that r was equal to negative 2, so that means I'm going to times by negative 2 every single time. So times in by negative 2. 9 times negative 2 gets me to negative 18. Times in by 2 again. Negative 18 times negative 18. It's going to get me to positive 36. And if I double check, times in that by 2 again, negative 2 again, I'll get to negative 72, and away we go. So it's working for us. So using r, basically, once you found a, you can use r to find term 2 and 3. So again, I found that by going 9 times negative 2, which is equal to negative 18, and then negative 18 times negative 2, which is equal to 36, and those being terms 2 and terms 3. So if you think you can understand this, that's awesome, because it's actually quite tricky. Um, there are some other ways to go about solving this, so if you think you see another way, if you've got some stronger algebra skills, feel free to give it a try and see if you get the right answers. But I'm going to go through one more example. If you're ready to move on, please do. Alright, so one more example here. Um, we can look at this first one here. Again, find the first three terms, and they've given me the first term, and t... Um, is e or term 4 here. So this is a slightly different example than what we've done because they've actually given us the first term which tells us that a is equal to 7. So if we think about this, we've got n, tn, 1 and 7, 2, 3, 4 is 189. So the fourth term has a value of 189. So going through the same process, um, I need to figure out what am I going to times or divide 7 by to get from 7 to 189 in 1, 2, 3 steps. So, if I think about doing what I've done before, I'm going to write out each of these as a fraction with a formula filled in, starting with the values. So 189 is equal to something I don't know, which is A in this case. But I actually know this time that a is term 1, so that's my a value, don't forget that. a is equal to 7, so I can put in the 7, times r, which I don't know, times n to the power of r times n, r times bracket n minus 1. So if I put this into solver, because actually that's all I need to do here to figure out what r is, I should be able to get r, sorry, not all that we need yet, n for the first term is 1. So, 189 is equal to 7 times r to the 0. Um, and I'm actually realizing here that what path I'm going down isn't going to work, so sorry to make you twink out if you've been going along with this or not. But I'm just going to stick with using the method that I've been describing, because it will work for every situation. It'll give you a bit more practice. So we know that a is 7, but let's just do this anyway. So, um, Oh, I know what I did wrong. Okay, so a is equal to 7. We can do this. So the fourth term, um, we have 189. We've put that down. a is equal to 7 times r. And what's n for the fourth term? n for the fourth term is going to be 4. So I'm going to use 4 minus 1. And you can put this in the solver to get r. And again, you can use algebra if you, if you, if you see fit, but you'll get here r is equal to 3. And now that you know r is equal to 3, that means we're going to times by 3 each time. So the first term was 7. If I times by 3, I'm going to get 21. And then if I times by 3 again, I'm going to get up to 63. So the first three terms are 7, 21, and 63. 
I will go on and do one more other example here. Um, dragging the video out a bit, but feel free to stop it if you've had enough. Um, okay, so starting with what I know, term 3 and term 6, I'm going to write a fraction with the bigger term, i.e. n is 6 versus n is 3. So n equals 6 for that one, n equals 3 for this one. Using the value first, 2,400, sorry, 2,048 is equal to a, which we don't know, times r, which we also don't know, to the power of 6 minus 1. And I might simplify that. 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. So I could say equal 5 there. Write it as a fraction, so I'm going to have 256 is equal to a times r to the power of this case, n is equal to 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. So I'm going to divide 2048 by 256, and you're going to get 8 is equal to, we cross out the a's, we're going to have an r, and it's going to be to the power of 5 minus 2. So 5 minus 2 is 3. So you can simplify the 6 minus 1 is 5, and the 3 minus 1 is 2 first, and then we're going to look at subtracting 5 and 2. So 5 minus 2 gets me to 3. You can put this into solver, and you will get r is equal to 2. And now we know that r is equal to 2, we can find the first term by saying t1 is equal to... Um, Sorry, we're not finding the first term first. We've got to figure out what a is exactly. So I'm going to use um, one of the pairs, like I did before. Here I might use the t3, so n is equal to 3, and I have 256. So I'm going to say 256 is my value, is equal to a, that I don't know, times r, which in this case is 2, to the power of n for the third term is 3, 3 minus 1. Plugging that into my calculator, you can get a, which is 64. So remember, a is also equal to t1, it's the first term. Sorry, not t equals 1, t1 is equal to 64, so I'm going to go 64. And my r is 2, so that means times by 2 every time. So 64 times 2 is going to get you to 128, times another 2 gets you to 256 which is what we'd expect for the third term, 256. So again, if you see some intuition on another way to go about solving the problem, please do. Um, it will probably work out for you, but if not, you can stick with this method and get yourself to the answer. Kill yourself.